a grade nine teacher. And so my name is Lolita Johnson and I am a religious studies teacher at the great C.H. Reeves Jr. And today we're going to be reviewing our lesson on the ministry of John the Baptist. Okay, there we go. I see the Q&A getting filled up. So, all right, there we go. All right, okay, now we're cooking, we, we're doing something here. So just be before we get started, I want us to just say a short prayer before we actually get started with the lesson. And that's usually what I do um, before I begin all of my lessons. And so, Father, I just thank you this afternoon, God, for these wonderful students that we have here with us this afternoon. Lord, we ask you, God, that you will be with us, guide us, Father. I pray, oh God, that you would give them the insight. God, you would help them to remember everything that we would have gone over this afternoon. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. And if you are able, let's all say amen. All right, so here we go. So we're going to be talking this afternoon about the ministry of John the Baptist. And before we get started, I want to ask you this question. What are some of the things you, and you can answer at your own pace, but what are the, some of the things some of the things that we need to do as we prepare our hearts to receive Jesus. This is one of the things that John the Baptist was doing. And as we go through the lesson today, we'll find out why John the Baptist was really preparing the people and preparing himself to receive um, Jesus. And so I want you to think about that question. And I know I, I, I don't want to rush you, but I just really want us to get through this lesson this afternoon. And so, okay. so here are our objectives for this afternoon class. And so at the end of this lesson, you would be able to define the following terms, forerunner, repentance, and baptism. Then we'll look at John the Baptist's clothing and his diet. And then thirdly, we're going to discuss the themes of John the Baptist's message. All right. So I want to show you a little video and our scripture this afternoon is taken from Luke chapter three, verse one to 19. So just watch this video for me and then we'll get into a little bit more discussion and we'll talk more about the lesson. First vocabulary word is the word forerunner. And the word forerunner is one who prepares the way or hearts for the coming of the Messiah. And this is the role that John the Baptist played. And if you were paying attention in the video, the people that were there at the Jordan River, they begin to ask John some questions. And John said, there's one who is coming that is mightier than I. And so that's where the word forerunner has to do with our lesson today. So John was actually the one who was going to prepare the hearts, who was going to prepare the hearts of the people for Jesus. All right. And then our next vocabulary word this afternoon
Oh boy, and my computer freeze. Okay, our next vocabulary word is the word penance, means simply to be sorry for an offense committed or to turn away from your sin. Now, we know what the word sin means, and we know the difference between right and wrong. And so the word sin there means that perhaps you may have done something wrong and you really want God to forgive you. You really feel bad for that wrong that you have done. And so you say, Lord, I feel bad that I stole my sister candy or I stole my uncle's, can um, my uncle's money. So Lord, I want to repent of my sin. The sin in my story just now was the money or the candy. And so you feel sorry for what you did. And so you said, God, please forgive me. I'm sorry for what I did. And I want to turn away from the wrong that I've committed. And so that's what the word repentance means. And so we heard John's message at the river. We heard what our author said in that poem that I played at the beginning of the lesson. All right. And so repentance. And then our third word for this afternoon's lesson is baptism. And baptism simply is a Christian ritual or initiation that involves being immersed in water. And so whenever you hear the word baptism, you know baptism is associated with the word water. All right. So now let's look at the story. I showed you the video already. All right. And so we are perhaps already have an idea of what the ministry of John the Baptist was all about. And so I'm going to read this for you and you can see it as well. Please feel free in your homes, wherever you are riding in the car, which we should all be at home. But wherever you are, I want you to read along with me. And so we're going to actually, we saw the picture version. Now I want us to read through the story of what the ministry of John the Baptist was all about. And so let's begin. Luke chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 3 to 17. So John went throughout the whole territory of the Jordan River. He was preaching. He said, turn away from your sins and be baptized. God will forgive you of your sins. He said, as it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah, someone is shouting in the desert, get the road ready for the Lord, make a straight path for him to travel. Every valley must be filled up, every hill and mountain leveled off. The winding roads must be made straight and the rough paths made smooth. The whole human race will see God's salvation. Crowds of people came out to, came out to John to be baptized by him. But John said, you snakes, he said to them, who told you that you could escape from the punishment God is about to send? Do those things that will show that you have turned from your sins. And don't start saying among yourselves that Abraham is, the, is your ancestor. I tell you that God can take these rocks and make descendants of Abraham. The axe is ready to cut down the trees at the roots. Now, all of this is John's message to the people. All right. And he said, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and they will be thrown into the fire. Now, the story continues. We're on verse 10. So if you're just log, um, logging in, we're discussing the ministry of John the Baptist. And we're reading from Luke chapter 3, and we're now on verse 10. The people asked him, what are we to do then? And he answered, whoever has two shirts must give one to the man who has none. And whoever has food must share it. Some tax collectors was also at the river. And they also came to be baptized and they asked him, teacher, what are we to do? Don't collect more than is legal, he told them. Some soldiers also asked him, what about us? What are we to do? He said to them, don't take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely. Be content with your pay. And we're almost there people's hopes began to rise and they began to wonder whether John perhaps might be the Messiah. So John said to all of them, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. Now, we heard this before. Which 
vocabulary word can we associate with that statement? That's for you to answer in the Q&A for me. All right? John said, and I repeat, to all of them, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. This is confirmation of one of our vocabulary words. Please go ahead at this time and let me know which vocabulary word that is. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn the chaff in a fire that never goes out. Now, that's a whole lot of information that I just gave you. Now, I want to make sure that you are on the same pace as I am. If I'm going too fast, please let me know. I don't want anyone to miss any part of this lesson today. When I'm done, you'll be able to answer all of your questions without even having to look back because you're paying very close attention to Ms. Johnson this afternoon and you're getting this information. And so, as stated, our second objective, we're going to find out about John's clothing and the things that he ate. And so let's look at our beautiful little John the Baptist here on the right-hand side of my screen. Now, I know I've already put the notes up and I should not have done that because I wanted you to probably guess what John was wearing. But since I already have it up on the screen, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, all of my participants this afternoon, John's clothes were made from camel's hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist. Now, he also lived in the desert. Now, how many of you know what a desert is? If you know what a desert is, just put in there a thumbs up. All right. And maybe for those who do not know what a desert is, a desert is a place where you actually see no houses. And all you see is some, some dirt or you see some land and it's almost like there's nothing in it. They may have trees, but it's a very rural place. Not many houses, not many people. This is where John lived. John diet was locust and honey and my pictures just showed up on the screen. So here we have the locust. And so if you didn't know what locust is, those little green and gray things right there on my screen, those are grasshoppers. And so I'm sure you know what grasshoppers are. We see them in our grasses all the time. And so this is the type of food that John ate. He didn't eat the peas and rice and the fried chicken like we eat, but he ate locusts and he ate, he ate the wild honey. And we all know what honey is. All right. So let's see if we can just go over, go repeat this information quickly as we go through this lesson. John wore clothes. His clothing was not like our t-shirts and jeans and all of that. John wore, and I'll give you a chance to say, good. I know some of you said camel's hair. He also, what did he wear around his waist? He wore a belt. Now, from my notes, what am I missing? John is wearing something else. Look at John's, look at John and tell me what are we missing? What did John wear on his feet? Very good. I hope you said he wore sandals on his feet. Good. All right. And as we repeat, what did John eat? His diet was locust and wild honey. Locust is grasshoppers. Where did John live? John lived in the desert. Okay. Now, we went over this already. And here's some information that I want to tell you. John the Baptist was called the good. He was called the forerunner of Jesus. Now, who was a forerunner? And I know my smart, my A, top class students can tell me who a forerunner is. Forerunner is very good. Forerunner is one who prepare the hearts for one that is coming. Very good. Our forerunner. John the Baptist was the forerunner for 
Jesus. Very good. And we saw that clearly in our scripture lesson this afternoon. Now, while John was at the river, John had two themes that he was discussing. The first thing John was saying to the people is they must what? They must repent. He said, repent and be baptized. He said it over and over and over and repeatedly until the questions began to flow from the mouths of the people. So the theme of John's message to the people that came was what? The first one was repentance. And the other one was baptism. Very good. I know I have some star students out there. And if I had a star sticker, I would plaster them all over your books this afternoon. Good. Now, we just saw this in our slide before. Where did John live? John lived in the desert. He lived in the wilderness and he preached. And I've been referring to the place where he was all afternoon. John preached around the River Jordan. Now, I wish I could hear you speak back to me so that it doesn't sound like I'm just teaching this lesson all to myself, but I hope you are excited about this lesson as I am presenting it to you. All right, now listen, you are going to see this information and it's possible to see it on your BJCs. So let's not, let's pay very close attention to what I am reviewing this afternoon. All right, now, he told he also told them that every tree which does not bear good fruit is going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now, John is talking about a tree, but do you think he literally means the tree that is outside in your backyard or in your front yard? Good, no, he was not talking about a literal tree that we see on the outside. Who do you think John was referring to? And if you said people, that's an extra star for you. John was talking about the people. Now we know everyone is not always going to be good and do good things. And so John was trying to remind them, let's try to be good. That's why he told them to repent and be baptized. He said, if you have a tree, if you are, if, if you he said that the tree which does not bear good fruit, what does that mean? We have to go and after we repent, we have to go and we have to tell others about, tell others about God so that they can also come into repentance. And so that's how you're going to bear fruit. I repent and then I go and share my message with someone and then they share it with others and that's how our tree begin to blossom. And that's what he was talking about, not the literal tree that's on the outside. All right. Another strong thing that John said in his message that I want to really personally pull out from our scripture is he said, the one who is coming after him is mightier than him and he is unable to untie his sandals. He knew Jesus ranked above him. He must decrease and Christ increase. He not only knew that he was not the Messiah, but he was not worthy to be the servant of the Messiah. And so John knew his place. Now, how many of you remember the relationship between John the Baptist and Jesus? Good. If you said that they were cousins, then you're absolutely correct. They were cousins, all right? And so John knew his place. And a part of his ministry, as we're discussing this afternoon, was to let other people, was to get other people, get their hearts ready to receive the Christ. All right? He knew his place. He knew that he must decrease. And he knew that Christ was coming. And he even went on to explain to the people, he said that I, John the Baptist, I'm going to baptize you with water. But the Christ, which is Jesus, who is coming, he is not going to baptize you with water, but he is going to baptize you with what? Anybody remember? Okay, good. He's going to baptize you with fire. And so as we can see, the ministry of Jesus and the ministry, the ministry of John the Baptist is going to be different. 
Today, we're looking at the ministry of John the Baptist. All right? Now, John preached to several groups of people at the river because they had some questions. They heard his message on repentance. They heard the message. They heard the message that they must be baptized. And we call those two words, repentance and baptism. What do we call them? His two themes, those were the main things that he talked about. But he had specific messages for people at the river. So they had questions. You know, they said, well, what about me? You know, how many times sometimes you see um, the, the teacher is in the classroom and she said, okay, Johnny, you come. And she said, Susan, you come. And then the teacher is saying, okay, Alice, you come. And then you have poor little Mikey sitting in the corner and Mikey says, teacher, what about me? All right. So yes, um, all of them heard the message, but they wanted to know specifically what was for them and just how you would want to know what exactly the teacher has for you. These groups of people want to know what John the Baptist would message he had specifically for them. So here goes. And it's up on my screen already. All right. So he said to the common people, he said to be kind, be compassionate. He said, share your belongings. If you have two coats, share with someone. You know, that's where repentance, you know, compassionate, be kind. And this is a message that God is giving, not that John the Baptist not only gave to the people at the river, but this message is really for us today because this word still stands strong in our society. God wants us to be kind. He wants us to be compassionate. You've been home in your houses for the last several weeks and the government is saying that we cannot go anywhere. So I'm sure some of you have little brothers and sisters and you're saying to yourself, I just want this to hurry up and be over because I cannot take it. I want some peace. But here's the same message that John the Baptist gave to the people is the message God is giving us today. Be kind. Be kind to your brother. Be kind to your sister. Oh, be kind to your parents. They're only trying to help you. So he said to the common people at the river, be kind, be compassionate. Share your food, share your belongings. Now I know some of y'all may be, Lord, I really don't want to share today. But let's remember what John the Baptist told the people. And let's remember what Jesus is saying to us today. Those of us that want to repent of our sins, then that means we are like Jesus. So our actions should be like him. And then he also said, okay, he gave a specific example. See, that's why I like John the Baptist. He was very clear. He said, okay, share your belongings. And he was specific. He said, if you have two coats, Give to one who has none. And many of us in that position today, there are lots of us who may not have everything that we need. Let's remember this message that John the Baptist gave to the common people. Let's remember this message that Jesus is speaking to us today. Let's remember that we ought to share. And then John spoke to the tax collectors. Now, we know who these tax collectors were. And if you don't, I'll remind you. They were the ones who took the money and they took more than they should have taken. And so our good friends, the Pharisees, they had issues with the tax collectors. And so John is saying to them, do not take more money from the people than what was legal. In other words, don't steal from them. Or in our Bahamian dialect, you'll stop teething the people money. That's what John the Baptist told the tax collectors. Don't take more than what is legal. Okay? And then these soldiers, they came and they wanted to know too. I don't want to be left out. I'm representing the soldiers here. I want to know what John has to say to me as well. And he said, do not be violent. Do not accuse anyone falsely and be content with your pay. Now, I've been doing a whole lot of talking. Now, it's going to be your turn. Now, 
let me see who was paying attention to our lesson today. And I know we're going to, we have about well, 14 more minutes or so to go. All right. So let me see who was paying attention. And you're going to type your answers. And I have some people in there who's helping me out this afternoon. And they'll be able to answer any questions you may have. So if you have a question, please feel free. Use the Q&A. Put your questions in there. And we'll be happy to answer them for you. So here we go. What do you remember? Who was paying attention? I have some stickers I really want to give out. Now we know it's going to be virtual. But it's okay. Here we go. So I, what I want you to do for me is I want you to write this down quickly. Just jot down number one, jot down number two, jot down number three. And as I go over the answers, then I'm going to give you about three minutes. And you're going to write number one and the answer. Number two and the answer. You're going to put the words in the blank for me. All right, very good. So I am sure I'm going to get 100% on this assignment right now. So good. For number one, if you said desert or wilderness, awesome, give yourself a tick. Number two, if you said that he wore clothing made of camel's hair and he wore a leather belt around his waist, Kudos, give yourself two points. Number three, if you said he ate locusts and wild honey, come on, all right, do a double dance, do a double dance, good. All right, number four, if you said he prepared the way for Jesus, awesome, high five, woo, number five. If you said the themes of John's message were repentance and baptism, you would have gotten 100% for your class assignment this afternoon. Now, that was one part. That was what you remember. All right? And so, as I conclude the lesson, because I want to conclude before I get into giving you the assignment, because the rest of the time this afternoon, which I have about, I'm going to give you, I'm going to put the questions on there because maybe some of you may not have access to a printer. And so um, I'm the actual activity sheet. If you have a printer, you can go on the website, you can download the worksheet and then you can just fill it in. Now, if not, I'm going to put the questions up on my screen here that you can see and I want you to get a piece of paper I want you to get a folder sheet or a book or something that you can give to your teacher and I want you to write the and write the questions and then you're going to write the answers now here's some information that I need you to put on that paper if you're writing you're going to give me your name you're going to give me your grade your school you go to, which island you're chiming in on this call from, and then you're going to put all of that information on your sheet of paper. When you return to school, once we get the clearance, then you will turn these assignments into your teachers because these are going to be graded assignments. So please do not take these lessons for granted. These are going to be actual assignments that your teachers will accept as a grade. And it will also let your teachers know that you were not wasting time. And so here are our questions. Remember the information that you need to put on that paper for me. All right. And so that activity that we did just now was actually to help us recap some of the things that we would have learned today. Now, our first objective led us to our vocabulary. Our vocabulary, the first word was good. Very good. If you said forerunner, excellent. And who did we say a forerunner is? Good. If you said one who prepares the way, awesome. All right. And then our next word was what? Repentance. And what did we say repentance was? To be sorry. 
all right, for your sins. Number three, and the third vocabulary word was baptism. And baptism is when water is a Christian initiation or ritual that involves being immersed into water. And when we talk about baptism, we'll talk about some other forms of baptism. And then we went straight into the ministry of John the Baptist. We learned about where he lived. We talked about what he wore. We talked about what he ate. We also learned that he was a forerunner. And he was the forerunner because he prepared the way for Jesus. And lastly, as I conclude this lesson, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson as much as I enjoyed teaching it, we learned about his two themes. And we also learned about the messages that he gave to how many groups of people. If you said three, you're correct. The first group of people he spoke to was who? The common people. What did he say to the common people? Good. I hope you're typing in these answers. So um, my panelist who's assisting me this afternoon can give you your beautiful tick. All right. He spoke to the common people. He said to them, be kind, be compassionate, share your belongings. You have a coat, share it. All right. Then he spoke to the tax collectors and he said to them to not collect more than is legal. And then he spoke to the soldiers. He said, do not be violent. And then he said to be very content with your pay. Now here's your assignment. And I'm going to give you your six minutes. Oh, I talk too much. I'm sorry. Please go ahead and take down the questions. Remember the information that I need you to put on there for me is your name your school, you're going to put, hope you, this is grade nine, going to put your island and definitely put the date. Put your topic on there for me, Ministry of John the Baptist. And I guarantee you, this assignment will go towards your terms work. So it's very important that you answer it. You may not be able to complete the assignment while we're doing this lesson right now, but please get the questions and you go ahead on your own time, complete the assignment and get it ready to turn into your teacher whenever we return to the actual classroom. So don't mind me. I'm talking, but you're writing. And so number one said, explain why John the Baptist was called the forerunner of Jesus. Oh, that's an easy two points. Then number two, describe John the Baptist's clothing and describe his diet. Oh my goodness. Five points. Some of you can answer this without even using your Bibles, without even going back into your notes. But if you have to, I prefer you to review it in your notes so that you can give me the correct answers. Number three, where did John live? And where did he preach? Good. Number four, give the two themes in John's messages. In case you're just joining me and we're almost out of time for this afternoon's lesson, please go and review John Luke, Luke chapter three and we read from verse 3 to 17. And all of these answers will be right there in that scripture. I
Guys and girls, can you guess what we are going to learn about in social studies today? You guessed it, Africa. Before we begin, here are some vocabulary words you will need for this lesson. Ancestors, persons from whom one is descended. Slave, a person who is the legal property of another and is forced to obey them. Slave trade, the buying and selling of slaves. Forbidden, not allowed, banned. Emancipation, freedom for slaves. In the Bahamas, approximately 85% of the population's ancestors were brought here as slaves. They journeyed across the Atlantic Ocean from West Africa or Central Africa. Africa is known as the place where the civilization of humans began. It is where humans, approximately 200,000 years ago, first appeared on Earth. Many people believe that the Garden of Eden is to be found in the interior of East Africa around the Great Rift Alley. Africa is also the home of many great civilizations. When the Europeans began traveling to West Africa in the early 16th century, they found well-established urban civilizations. The buildings were made of stone and the villages were inhabited by thousands of people. The people who lived there herded livestock and cultivated millet with Neolithic tools. They belonged to the Saniki, a Mande-speaking people who later formed the Kingdom of Ghana. The Mali Empire consisted of basic settlement units known as Kafu or wall towns with surrounding farmlands. Approximately 1,000 to 15,000 people lived there. The Ife Empire was well known even in the 9th century for its metal and glass industries and particularly for its sagai beads and cast brass sculptures. These empires were found along the Niger River with its capital in the great city of Timbuktu. These empires used the labor of slaves. Within them, there were educated clerics and lawyers. There was also the University of Sankor at Timbuktu. Other urban states were those of the Asante and Yoruba. In the benign city-state, bronze casting was prominent. It is thought that African people first came to the Bahamas in the early 1500s with the Spanish explorers. Before Africans were taken into slavery, all of the people were free. The young children ran freely among hills and valleys. Then bad times came. Some chiefs came to their land and to their villages. 
They did not speak their language and they took the strong men, the beautiful women, and the innocent children. They tied them together with chains and herded them off like animals. The people of Africa did not go meekly, however. Many resisted and some chose death rather than be taken. Many Africans died there on those beautiful hills and blood ran like water over the land. The rest of the Africans were marched to the coast and made to board a special ship built to carry slaves. The captain and the crew were white. The ship carried the Africans away to new lands far away from the shores of Africa. The Africans traveled across the ocean on a crowded ship and were packed into a narrow stinking space. The Africans were allowed on deck once a day for a little exercise and fresh air. Many of the slaves died of diseases, however, and some killed themselves by jumping overboard. The groans and screams of the dying was like hell on earth. This dreadful voyage during the transatlantic slave trade is known as the Middle Passage. It was the most cruel thing for one group of people to do to another. When the Africans arrived in Nassau, they were sold at Bendel House. Rich landowners bid on them, and whoever offered the most money became their owner, and slaves were taken to the plantation. Here they grew cotton, which was shipped to other countries. They grew other crops as well for them to eat. Life was very hard. For slaves. One day things began to change. People in other parts of the world learned about the terrible Middle Passage and the cruelty that many slaves suffered on the plantations. Some people in England tried to stop the slave trade. They also called for the emancipation of slaves. In 1804, the trade in African slaves across the Atlantic was forbidden. However, slaves in the Bahamas were not yet free. Even after the English stopped their ships from carrying enslaved people, other countries continued. The British captured some of these ships, however, and set the Africans free. Many of them were brought to the Bahamas they settled in Nassau, Grand Bahama, and on Andres. It was another 30 years before slaves in the Bahamas were freed. On August 1, 1834, a new law called the Emancipation Act came into effect. From that day, every slave in the Bahamas was free. That concludes our lesson on Africa, boys and girls. I hope you learned a lot. Until next time.